everyone. Probably met uh, most of you in the community, but if uh, I haven't met with you before, my name is Aicha Bash. I'm a senior cloud advocate at Microsoft and M365 Advocacy. I'm based in Dubai and I love building solutions, including Microsoft Graph, Microsoft Teams, and my background is also Azure. Before joining the advocacy, I was a premier field engineer at Microsoft, so I also worked a lot with Azure Functions, bots, and everything related with developer services on Azure pretty much. And uh, I share a lot on Twitter and LinkedIn if you're interested in connecting and uh, sharing what we learn. Uh, between each other, feel free to connect from the socials as well. Today, uh, this is our agenda. First off, we will talk about Teams Toolkit for Visual Studio. Uh, I will show you how you can install the Teams Toolkit for Visual Studio. We already had a session about that, but if you missed that, don't worry about it. I'm just going to show you how you can get started with it. And then we will create the first command bot uh, by using the Teams Toolkit for Visual Studio. Um, and after that, we will run the bot on Teams. I will just walk you through the code a little bit, how, how uh, we run the adaptive card and how basically uh, the bot looks like on Visual Studio. And afterwards, we will just uh, take a look at how we can implement the new comments and which part of the code we need to basically uh, add more and so on. And then finally, I'll share the resources with you. If you're interested in the comment bots with Teams Toolkit for Visual Studio Code, uh, last week my colleague Gary actually uh, demoed about comment bots for Teams Toolkit for Visual Studio Code. You can check out his uh, presentation in the community YouTube channel uh, and you will learn more how you can do the exact same thing on Visual Studio Code. Okay, so let's get started with the Teams Toolkit for Visual Studio. So I already launched the installer. If you know the Visual Studio, uh, we need to first off in, uh, install the Visual Studio 2022. And then if you modify, if you haven't installed Teams Toolkit yet, then we actually have under the ASP.NET and web development, you will see Microsoft Teams development tools. If you install this as well, then you will get all the required debugging items and as well as creating Teams app tools with this. And once you install this, you are pretty much good to go. I already did that and I'm just going to close this tab. Okay. I start running Visual Studio 2022 and the first thing we will do is creating a new project. Once you, once you install the Microsoft Teams development tools, then when you search about Teams, you will see this item coming automatically, which is a project template. You can create a project by uh, for Microsoft Teams just selecting this and then next it automatically did that in the previous one, so I just go get back. OK, let's say community call bot. And then I'll just create this. Now I need to choose what kind of what type of Teams app I want to create. We have notification bot, comment bot, tab and messaging extension. We already talked about notification bots in the previous uh, community calls, and we also show how to build tabs in the Visual Studio with the Teams toolkit. Now today we will just talk about the comment bot. First off, to start with, what is comment bot? It's actually the simple version of the bot. It is when you write something, bot replies back with the response. It's a pretty much hello world style bot. Uh, when you say hello, it says hi back and you can edit the responses accordingly. It's really good practice if you have a bunch of FAQ questions, especially if you want to use Q&A maker cognitive service uh, in your bot, then comment bot is a, a really good place to start with with the Teams app development. Let's create this and then we will talk more what comment bot is. If you haven't tried this before, it already comes with some question type and the, not exactly question, but the comment to trigger the answer. And then it also provides you an answer with an adaptive card. It's also pretty good 
if you're starting from scratch, you first, when you first run with F5, you will see some results and afterwards you can deep dive in the code and understand how the code structure works. OK, so the good thing is when you first start off, if you're new, there is a really good get started text file. It says that download and install NROC. If you, I don't know if you work with NROC, but it is uh, providing a tunneling uh, resource. If your bot is not published yet, you will have to create this tunnel in the background. So you will have to run NROC with HTTP 5130. I already have NGROC and I need to run this before I prepare my bot for the dependencies. Let me just select NGROC and um, if you're new to NGROC concept, you can actually search for help and it will bring all the resources that you can call for the NGROC, all the types you can uh, create a tunneling and so on for us. We will just copy paste ngrog http 5130 and then it should work for us okay and it's free i, I haven't paid anything it's just running tunneling localhost uh, 5130 for me and then i will start preparing my bot okay so it already says in here when you run ngrog just go ahead right click to uh, the project and then select teams toolkit and prepare Teams app dependencies. Let's do that. And it also says sign in with Microsoft 365 account for the Teams organization you want to install the app to. Let's try to do that. I will right click to the project, Teams toolkit, and then prepare Teams app dependencies. Over here, it brings me M365 Advocates account I already have. This is the account I created as a demo account if you want if you don't want to test uh, teams app on your company account or school account it's the best to just go to m365 developer program and create your own account to test out uh, these style of apps it's for free and it creates you a sandbox to play around with a bunch of users and emails and so on it's it's a really good development environment i will continue with this and I will let my bot prepared in my demo account. It automatically uh, registers the bot in the uh, Active Directory. Uh, so bot for provisioning is also done for us. We don't have to worry about going to uh, Azure and creating bot registration and registering it, so on and so forth. All of the preparations are done for us through the Teams toolkit. If you want to check out what is provisioned, you can take a look at the code. We will do that in a second. Let's just first try the app and see what it is providing. And lastly, it says over here that press F5 or select the box start debugging. And don't forget, we have to say hello world to trigger the response. In here, we will just need to click this button and you can choose the browser of your choice. I'm going to choose Microsoft Edge and click over here. This will automatically start running Teams on Microsoft Edge and then it will come with already authorized user I chose in the preparation. You remember it's Achabash at Enter 65 Advocates account. Teams comes with a login user, and when it is ready, it will pop the app uh, that we would like to run. We will just click on Add, and then app will start running on our personal chat. If you want to change that, you can also just test this out in the channel or group chat, so on and so forth. OK, Teams is already running, and our app is ready to test. Now we can add this and test it out. Here we already know what we will say to the bot as a trigger, it's hello world, but we don't know the outcome yet. I will just test it out first and then I will show you where the response is coming from. And here we already have suggestions, which is a great thing. If you are starting from scratch or even for your users, it's great to provide a suggestion so that they're not confused what to do in the first place. 
I will just send hello world and expect bot to respond back with a message. Um, hopefully, adaptive card. <laughs> yeah. So we have an adaptive card here ready. It's saying, congratulations, your hello world bot is running. And it provides two links. Once, uh, one of the links will go to bot framework docs, and the other one is the Teams Toolkit docs, which is great. You can exactly do the same thing for your own questions and answers. And as I mentioned, this is really useful. Comment bot is really useful when it comes to using QA Maker with it. If you have a bunch of bunch of questions on your website. Uh, you can literally copy paste the link of your website. Q&A Maker will generate automatically questions and answers for you. You will just need to use the Q&A Maker API in your comment bot and you're good to go. All right, let's deep dive in the code. This is pretty much what we can do so far because we didn't uh, edit the bot. Let's understand where the response is coming from. First off, I'm just going to close this. And so here we have comments and we have hello world comment handler CS. This is the place we actually render the uh, adaptive card and we re read the adaptive card as a response to the trigger. As you can see here, we have trigger patterns. This is where we define the trigger for our comment handler. Uh, here we say hello world, but we can literally change this to ping. And then when we write ping, then bot will respond back with um, answers of the adaptive card. It is defined as hello world.json uh, and it stays under the resources over here. Let's quickly take a look at the JSON. So this is the adaptive uh, card template we're using. We literally have title. Uh, description, which is defined as body, and we have two buttons over here. But if you want to create your own adaptive card, and if you don't want to write uh, by hand manually, you can just go to adaptivecards.io, and you can. There's also a designer. You can drag and drop buttons and descriptions. You can literally build your own adaptive card. And the only thing you will need to do is just copy paste of the JSON file over here. And then the handler will mainly uh, read your own adaptive card when you define it over here. Once we trigger the command bot with hello world, let's scroll back, uh, down and here is the handle command async. This is the part that we handle the command. Um, and as you see, we are actually logging the message of the user. A message that text in here is user's message, which is hello world. I already wrote hello world and it is logged by uh, the bot, our code. And after that, once we are done logging, we will just read the adaptive core template, which is the template we defined on top over here, a hello world card, and uh, it should be defined. Uh, yeah, adaptive card file path. Yeah, it's defined over here. Adaptive card template, and then render the card content. And we are able to fill uh, the card content by ourselves. That means that if you want to reuse the same adaptive card template, hello world card.json, the only thing you need to do is just creating multiple models like title and the body. Um, and you can give different responses to the different questions. In here, it says title, uh, your hello world bot is running. But then by defining a new trigger uh, on top, you can literally just have a new model by using the same adaptive card. You can just give another response to the user. It means that if you have, let's say, hundreds of different answers to hundreds of different questions, you don't have to create different adaptive cards for each and every one of them. You can literally pass and render the same adaptive card by just defining the parameters. And we build the attachment. It's the Microsoft card adaptive. And uh, this is a classic way of calling the adaptive card. And then we will just send the response. 
Um, if I need to walk you through the rest of the code, we actually have that .fx file, which we have the states of the user. When we right click to the bot and go to Teams toolkit and prepare Teams app dependencies, it literally cr creates this local .user data, uh, which includes all of the Active Directory and the bot provisioning information about my bot. And if you delete this, you will have to regenerate and prepare the dependencies from scratch. It's important because if you want to remove the bot and uh, test it out as from scratch, like incognito, you will have to delete this and test it out again. Let's close the comments because we know Hello World comment handlers CS yes already. We have the bot controller over here, which has two uh, logs. We are keeping the conversation and the bot. Pretty much we are passing two of them. They, these two are quite important for us. And we also have model. If you want to design a new adaptive card and pass new information, let's say instead of title and body, you can pass username, uh, user ID, user email address and stuff. You will just have to create a new adaptive card and then the new model for your adaptive card. This is only used for filling out the information that we define in the adaptive card. As you can see, we use dollar sign and the title, dollar sign, curl bracket, and body. We can reuse the same card again, again, again. Finally, we have the templates. One template is for app package, which includes our manifest for teams. And then we have app resources. Uh, it is totally changeable if you want to define an image for your own uh, Teams app. And if you want to change the manifest for your Teams app, you can do it from here. And we have Azure. This has uh, all the provisioning uh, biceps for bot service, identity, web app. And also we have Teams effects we need to handle. All these I'm just showing, but these are uh, the parts that are already automated with BICEP. So when you run the app dependencies for your bot, so, uh, sorry, when you right click to the bot and then Teams Toolkit and then prepare Teams app dependencies, these parts are all handled by the Teams Toolkit. You don't have to worry about setting up any of these. The only thing you have to do is just running Ngrok, uh, in the right port and you're good to go. And this is pretty much it. So the, if, if you would like to add new command into your bot, you can add a new command class easily in here. And after that, you will have to either reuse the same adaptive card or create your own adaptive card. And you can add it in the resources. And we will need a model for your adaptive card but after that, you're pretty much good to go and you can define your own resources. What I recommend highly, if you already practice comment bot on Visual Studio or Visual Studio Code, I highly recommend you to test out comment bot with the Q&A maker. Uh, this will make a big difference in terms of defining thousands of questions and thousands of answers it automatically gets all the questions and answers from an Excel file or website or some other place that you can copy paste the URL. And uh, it will define all the questions and answers. You can just call the API in your comment handler and that's all. You can use the same adaptive card pretty much for thousands of questions and answers and it will look pretty nice. I think this is all. Excellent. That was a lot of stuff, Aisha. So really, really cool. And it's good to walk through this scenario as well. So now we have two different uh, great demo videos, first from Gary and then from Aisha on the different scenarios. But one was for the Node.js and VS Code. And this one was the Visual Studio Code IDE. So really cool to see that getting GA'd as well. Awesome stuff. Thank you, Aisha.